I just bought a brand new Ram 2500 diesel. I love the truck, but I didn't buy it to look at. I bought it to do heavy hauling with. And I've been looking in depth at tow capacities, payload ratings, and how those two relate to each other. And then looking at the way the trucks are being used on the Ram Trucks website and all the information I can find on there. And I'm coming up with a couple of issues that I didn't really understand and that you might want to be aware of. So let's get into the video. I felt like before I ordered this truck, I had done some pretty exhaustive research on what I could do with it. I was coming from a fully loaded Ram 1500 Limited with the air shocks and it was it was towing my tractor, it was hauling it, but with the dump trailer, I was really pushing the capabilities of that truck and probably exceeding it. So I really need to upgrade. And before doing so, I tried to find out as much as I could about what a truck like this would tow and whether that would require me to get a CDL and you know try to know what I was ordering before I ordered it. That was in September. That's when I ordered the truck. It came in a few days ago. I love this truck. I did a video the other day about how it was the perfect truck. I actually said that. But not perfect truck for everyone because everyone's looking for something different. But perfect for me, what I was looking for, and mainly what I meant is that I didn't sacrifice anything in terms of features that I wanted. I got what I wanted. Fast forward five days later, I've been a little bit sick and it's been the holidays. I've been spending a lot of time in the house looking online at every Facebook group I could find related to three quarter ton trucks and, and diesel trucks. I joined a couple of Dodge Ram forums and just read all the conversations I could about accessories, upgrades, capabilities, anything you might want to know. And what I've found out is a lot of people buy a truck like this only looking at the tow rating and don't understand that that doesn't mean they can actually tow that much. From everything I can understand, I will never be able to haul the tow capacity of this truck legally because of the truck's payload. If you buy a three quarter ton gas truck, you'll have a payload 1500 pounds higher than you will on this truck. And there's a lot of other variables like the length of your cab, the length of your bed, things like that, but in general, the truck that most people are buying, like mine, like a crew cab with a six foot bed, three quarter ton diesel, is such a heavy truck that you can't have that much payload. Now I'm gonna take you in and show you the Dodge website and show you pictures of them using this truck to haul equipment that I believe would overload the capabilities of the truck, which is not great. Now they may have custom picked the models they showed to make sure that it complied but it's a little bit misleading to think that you can buy any Ram 2500 and have that capacity. Also I'm going to show you that at the end of the ordering process it never updated those numbers for me. So let's jump on the computer take a look at a few things and then I'll give you my final thoughts on whether or not this truck is going to work for me to haul a skid steer or a mini excavator, or a larger tractor, or anything else I might end up with. Okay, now I go to ramtrucks.com. The only thing I've done is select Ram 2500, 2022. Right here it says with the 6.7 Cummins turbo diesel, the Ram 2500 has never met a job it couldn't handle. They th show it here with a Case 321F loader. That loader weighs just under 14,000 pounds. Let's assume they have a really light bumper pull trailer here, and that's another 3,000. You could be right at the tow capacity that my truck has. Now, there's no guarantee this tow capacity is the same. You can see here it's a Cummins, so it's the same engine. It's a 2,500. It's, you know, a four-door truck. I can't say which cab or which bed length it is, but it's gonna be pretty close. So this is a 17,000 pound rig they have behind it. Let's assume that 15% of that is transferred. That means that the trailer setup they have transfers 2,550 pounds onto the truck. 
Well, if this was a gas three-quarter ton truck, it would have a payload that could handle that. But my truck has an available payload of 2,144 pounds. So without a passenger in the truck, without a driver of the truck, they're already 400 pounds over their payload. So possibilities exist here. Ram trucks, website designers, probably smarter than me. Maybe this transfers a lower percentage. Maybe there's some d differences in this configuration that have a 2,500 pound payload, but you'd have to add at least 200 pounds for a driver. Then you're at 2,750. I find that unlikely. Probably they're intentional about showing this on a bumper pull because maybe that's transferring less weight and it lets you get by. But most guys aren't hauling this equipment on a bumper pull. I would definitely prefer to haul it with a gooseneck. But this is important information. If you come down here and look, they've got another big tractor. This is going to be a really heavy machine. I can't see the model numbers on it. Once again with a bumper pull. So let's take my 2,144 pounds of payload. And we're going to round off and say that I weigh the 244. That's pretty close. That leaves you with 1,900 pounds of payload. Let's say that when I haul equipment, I never take someone with me to help me work. If I do, that makes a drastic difference on the amount of weight I can put on the back because the weight in your cab is exponential compared to the weight on your trailer. So I now have a 1,900 pound available payload. Now let's divide that 1,900 pounds by 0.15. I can now pull a trailer that weighs 12,666 pounds. The average weight for a gooseneck trailer is 4,000 pounds, means I have 8,666 pounds I can put on that trailer. Most skid steers weigh more than that, all the ones I've been looking at. And if you have your skid steer with an attachment, you're almost guaranteed to weigh more than that. Following everything they say, the Ram 2500 has never met a job it couldn't handle, except for hauling an average skid steer on a gooseneck trailer. And I bet the majority of people are not aware of that. And more than that, what a lot of people run into is buying this truck to pull a fifth wheel camper and realizing that they can't do it because a fifth wheel puts even more weight onto your payload. And you can only do that if it's a very small fifth wheel camper. So this is important information. Now the missing piece to this formula is the exact percentage of weight being transferred from the trailer to the truck. If it's 10%, then you say I have 1,900 pounds of payload available. Divide 0.1 means I can pull 19,000 behind. But the numbers I'm seeing online is some websites say 15, some say 13. Bottom line, it depends on your trailer. Is it a short trailer and you're whole load is centered over the axles or is it a long trailer and you're parked further forward so it's really going to make a big difference and the only way to know is to get a weigh safe hitch there's other ways you can weigh it but i'm going to weigh every trailer i have fully loaded i have a 14,000 pound capacity dump trailer that's bumper pull i'm going to see how much weight 14,000 pounds on a bumper pull transfers to the truck I also have a 14,000 pound gooseneck. I'm going to see how much of that weight transfers to the truck. And once I know those numbers, I will know what I can and cannot legally haul. And the question becomes, why does this truck have such a low payload that prevents you from pulling your tow rating? And the answer is, they want this to be a Class B truck. Class 2B, I believe is what it is. You've got different class ratings of truck. And they can't go over a certain weight to be in that class rating. This is a class 2B, which is 8,500 to 10,000 pound GVWR. If they give it a higher GVWR, they have to classify it differently. So even though I believe that you could put 3,000 pounds in the bed of this truck and be okay with the air ride suspension that I have, I think it would be just fine. But it's not rated for that. And for warranty and insurance purposes, you might want to be careful about what it's rated for, not just what it can do. Now, let's see. If you are doing what I did, and you're coming on this website, and you're building a truck to order. And I, I actually ordered it at the dealership, but I built the order on the website, took it in, and 
showed it to the dealership what I wanted, and talked to them for quite some time before actually placing the order. So you're on here and you're looking at it and you're wanting to buy this truck. So next thing you do is go to capabilities to see what does that mean? Never met a job it couldn't handle. Well, obviously, you know, it's this truck's not going to pull a semi or a trailer for a semi. So it's within reason. Everybody understands that's implied. Let's go to capability. Okay, here we have the turbo diesel. Foot-pounds of torque, towing capacity, payload, horsepower. This tells me I have a 3,000 160 pound payload capacity. I ordered the truck under the belief that this would be my payload capacity. If that's your payload capacity, you can have your full tow capacity behind the vehicle and two people that are working with you in the truck and you're fine. Uh, somewhere on here does it say that if I get that I'm gonna have less payload maybe in here Towing and payload. Choose a vehicle. Okay, so this is where the information is going to be. Now, I've used this page with my VIN number to get my exact numbers. Choose a vehicle. Ram 2500. Look at that. So I'm starting off. I'm seeing this. I'm like, that's awesome. Okay, so there's the information. And then you start looking at these. And this is where your numbers are, but that's a single cab. That's a gas single cab that has those capabilities. Less tow capacity on that one. You come up here, turbo diesel with a single cab. That's where you're getting your numbers, okay? Look how many of these there are to go through before you find out what yours will be. There's... There's one with 11,000 pound tow capacity. This is less tow capacity than my half ton Ram had with a Cummins Mega Cab four wheel drive. I don't know what it is about this Limited, but if you, man, if you're wanting to really haul something, you don't want this three quarter ton diesel right here. So that's my fault, I suppose, because I didn't go through this. What I did was I looked at all of this information on the first page I showed you, I looked at this information right here, and then I went build and price. I selected all my options. I built out the truck, and it's a long process to build out the truck. I went with the Laramie Crew Cab 4x4, 6 foot, 4 inch box. Went through all these features. As you go through these features and you build it, you go through all of this and you come down here. At some point, you have the GVWR. At some point on this page, I would want to see my new payload. I don't know if it's on here, but I don't see it. I don't believe that anywhere on this, after you build your truck, does it tell you that the payload you saw on the first page isn't your actual payload. I want to point out that I'm not bashing Dodge in any way here or saying that their pictures aren't accurate. I bet that these pictures represent a legal towing situation, but they could lead to misunderstanding, and that's what I'm trying to convey here. So there are two camps when it comes to a conversation like this. Camp number one is Figure out all the regulations, exactly what everything's supposed to be. Never exceed that and generally stay at 75% of it. Those are smart people, cautious people. But it's not the only way. There's also the just send it crowd. And we've all seen people who have a 20-year-old half-ton truck that's routinely pulling a massive trailer. And they're doing just fine with it. It's not for me to tell you which group to be in. I'm trying to spread general information and then everyone can make their own choice. I've ordered a way safe gooseneck ball that you set in place of your normal gooseneck ball and you hook your trailer up and it'll tell you exactly how much payload you're putting onto the truck. So if I hook up my trailer 
and I load the skid steer towards the back, too far towards the back, it might be okay. You pull it forward too far, it might be too much weight. So I'm gonna use that way safe ball to understand exactly what I'm doing and how it affects my safety, my warranty, and my insurance on the truck. Overall, would I order this truck still, knowing what I know now? Yes, I would. I believe that I'm gonna be fine. The possibility still exists, though, that I get that way safe ball, and I'm really frustrated with the fact that I can't haul a standard size skid steer under specifications with a three quarter ton diesel. It's important information to know. So that way safe hitch will be in next week. I'll do an updated video where we go to the scales, we check everything out, and we find out exactly what the situation is. I've got a 14,000 pound trailer. I will load it up almost to capacity and go weigh and see exactly how much weight I have and then see how much of that weight is transferred onto the truck and just see where things stand. It's important to know. I want to have that information for myself and I want to share it with you. I appreciate you taking time to watch. You should see more of our videos over here and I'll see you next time.